All right, I uh, just put together the bolt heads to get, or the locking blocks together uh, today. And I still haven't glued on the barrel yet, but um, to the threading, but um, getting there. So, I'm yeah, just gonna show you how it locks in place. And um, so you have this piece right here, which uh, aids the rollers to spread it out. But uh, what basically causes the rollers to spread out is these notches here in the inside, four notches here. And, and oh, and by the way, the, um, the rollers will be sta uh, retained in this posi position by the rails on the inside of the receiver. So, you know, it'll be riding against it like that. So there's no way this thing will spread out. But anyway, so, so just this one lock just goes in and locks as you can see the roller spread out and just secures in there and then when the when the round is fired the bullet leaves the barrel and gas will build up inside of the booster cone in front of the barrel which pushes the entire entire barrel backwards by about eight millimeters and there'll be the unlocking rails that right behind the bolt or the rollers so the movement of the barrel will cause the rollers to unlock and the you know the reaction force of the bullet or that cartridge will kick the entire uh, bolt backwards and you know cycle you around so uh, one thing I wanted to say another tips um, I'm not sure if, you're, if I told yeah, I remember saying something about the little, like, uh, if you make a mistake, like a little overcut or like a, um, like a nix or something like that. I told you you can fix it with a uh, super glue and baking soda. And what it basically does, it's like a epoxy, instant epoxy. And uh, I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but like this portion here and there, that's all um, just super glue and baking soda. So this whole top portion, so it's it's essentially like a hard, dense plastic, essentially. So it's great for filling up those mistakes or gaps and such. And uh, so, you know, if you're, like in this case, uh, there were a little bit of a loose space right here. So what I just did is, you know, bake, use the baking soda and super glue to fill up some of the gaps and just go back with a knife and, you know, dremels and stuff to get the right dimensions so you can always come back and work with it and uh, also on the uneven surfaces fixing that uh, it might sound ironic but you can just take a sandpaper and well sandpaper to paper so you can also just like get, lay up um, like uh, some sort of paper with a little bit of paint on it just let it run against it a little bit, see where the high points are, and just keep sanding it until you get an even surface. So you can do that with the, oh, pretty much any part you want, smoothened. So, you know, as, as I finish the, the layers on the barrel, I'll probably go back with the sandpaper backed by some sort of like flat surface to sand the entire thing smooth so you know what uh, it'll be flush and you won't have a lot of little wrinkles and bumps so that's another thing you can do to make the finished product look nicer is just sandpaper so uh, that's pretty much it and uh, oh and also if you're wondering what this hole is it's part of the design and um, what it basically is is well first of all it lessens the load or the weight and second of all when you have something like MG42 firing so many rounds per uh, minute uh, you're bound to have a I don't know bad ammo or extractor failure and you, the cartridge will be stuck in the barrel and so what this hole does is you get yourself a tool or a lot of times the starter tabs will have the hook on the other end and you just take that Put it through that hole, and just get get a hold of the rim of the cartridge, and you know, just use the leverage and pull it right out. So that's 
part of the design feature. I thought that was cool. So I'll probably keep pointing out a lot of the features they put on the MG42 as I go along. So that's pretty much it.